Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? One of the great things about this community and about being responsible in this community is that you can have discussions where you disagree with other people or you have varying differences of opinion and not get into fist fights and flame wars. Of course, you could get into those fist fights and flame wars and that's all over the internet, so we're not going to go down that rabbit hole now, are we? Um, I've enjoyed my discussion, as it were, via comments and video responses with, with Sean uh, O'Farrell. And uh, he, his la last set of comments on my last video, uh, which was the response to him, really interesting. So I wanted to kind of address those because that brings up a great point. It brings up something that I talk about an awful lot. And that's about the emerging character. You know, I made some videos very recently talking about interactions between the characters and sometimes bringing more information to the table for the other players to use. Um, but, you know, the, the truth of the matter is, generally, characters tend to develop over time in terms of figuring out who the heck they are. And that's one of the most enjoyable parts of the game for me, is that they become, you know, not only my character, but the other players' characters become richer and richer over time, and we really figure out who these people are. And so Sean uh, brought up an interesting thing in one of his comments. Uh, he talked about the two major schools of character development, either, you know, uh, developing them on creation or uh, versus in-game. Because he said, you know, um, this is in the context of saying he's not interested in playing somebody smarter than he is if he can't do it himself, and he has to rely on his character sheet to actually get inside his character's head, he's not going to get any satisfaction from playing the character anyway. So, this in-game versus, you know, uh, created character uh, schism. He says, if, you're, uh, if your character's already well-developed from the get-go, then abilities to represent the character are much more important. But, if your character starts out as a blank slate and develops as you go, then player skill works really well because their experience naturally grows alongside your own. Now here's the schism that Sean and I probably have, is, you know, I love to see the emerging character come out. And I'd love to talk to him about this. That'd be kind of interesting to see, you know, uh, what our, you know, in, in real time, what our actual takes are and where our similarities and differences are. Um, but I like to, um, I found that I like to have some kind of representation via the, the uh, whatever their abilities or skills are to, to give me an idea of who this person is competence-wise. Um, and I tend to like games that allow me to, to do that in terms of at least, you know, having some kind of karma-based system. So, you know, Joe is this intelligent. He knows, you know, he should know this kind of stuff. Um, but the character, the, the, the personality, the, the goals, the drives, the motivations, just how this guy deals with life, these things, you know, I love it when they emerge over time. I love it, you know, the the, uh, the continuing um, relationships that are developing between the the musketeers as, as we play all for one. You know, I love the the uh, the characters that developed and their interactions with each other uh, in the Lamentations in Prussia game. It was really interesting. Jason quipped to me that like he wasn't sure that Jurgen wouldn't kill Hans if he was given if he had to for probably about five or six sessions. <laughs> you know, I I'm like I thought he would have killed him at any moment if he had the chance to. But that's something that Jason was discovering about his character over time. You know, cool stuff. Um, what I am not necessarily interested in is having the um, the character develop uh, along with my skill because if my character's experience is naturally growing alongside my own then at least to me I'm not playing a character the character is an avatar the character is is a pawn or something that I can use to um, interact in the game world to you know, solve problems, that sort of thing. And that's, a, you know, if, if you read Sean's comments where he talks about the idea of, like, the solving the puzzles and all the stuff in the player-facing mechanics where, you know, he wants to be able to figure these things out to, to you know, solve all the riddles and, and what have you, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, go look up Step On Up on, on the interwebs. And, uh, you know, because that's essentially, to me, what he's describing. Um, whereas my... my general uh, preference or agenda for play is, is much more the right to dream, where I like to inhabit the character. So, you know, I understand where he's coming from, but it's, it's, it's a, it sounds like a nuance, but I, I believe uh, in actual application, it's a much bigger schism between, you know, what character is going to emerge. One of the, one of the downfalls also, and I'm not knocking his style, but is, you know, if the character's experience is growing alongside your own, we all started out as role players, and to one extent or another, we kind of fumbled our way through it. You know, we didn't, um, we hadn't encountered a lot of the problems that we encountered in role-playing before, and so we made a lot of mistakes. I still make some pretty good mistakes, but, you know, you say your first characters. 
over time, your experience increased and your character became smarter. They were able to figure out the world a lot better because you were able to figure out the world a lot better. But how does that translate to your next character? Well, your next character isn't going to grow and develop because they already know all the stuff because you bring it with you. I remember running a game of uh, D&D or something like that some years ago, and it was not my best job, but uh, the, the party ended up in a room, and there was an object in the room, and it was a little transparent, but a very experienced player um, just blurted out, well, that's a mimic, and had his character act accordingly. His character was a relatively inexperienced person, but because the character was an avatar, a tool, to you know, for that player to use to interact with the game world, that character was in fact you know very savvy, and it's it's something that did not um, jive with you know playing in character, so to speak. Uh, nothing wrong with that style of play, but we had very different intentions for uh, for that. You know, whereas you know interacting with a character for me, that's if you know just because I happen to know all these things, it's very unsatisfying to have my character now know all these things. So I understand where Sean's coming from, and and once again, this very big difference in intentions, uh, and I and I believe probably, you know, more of what um, you know he's looking for, and I'd love to see, I'd love to get his correction or, or clarification, is is more of the, the, the avatar experience where you have a, a character that you can then use to interact with this game world, but it's really you. Whereas I tend to gravitate much more towards, okay, let's figure out who this guy is a little bit in terms of his you know, competencies and you know, basic ideas or, or flaws or motivations or something. Some, some you know, little thing. And then let's go discover who he is as he interacts in the world. And it's, I'm playing as the character. You know, interesting difference. We both get to see our characters develop, but it's different. So a uh, bit of a ramble, but uh, what do you think about all that?